Remember that earlier when we were talking about lump ports and equivalents in particular? We uh, claim that given an LTI resistive circuit, a one port, okay, which does not include no independent sources, which does not include any independent sources inside, can always be represented or equivalent to by a single component, and that single component is an LTI resistive. Uh, RTI And that the resistance of that resistor is called the input resistance okay, of this one port. And the notation was this. Okay. This, is, uh, this means the input resistance seen from the, the port terminals for this for this one port that does not contain any independent source. Okay. Now in this lecture we will generalize this observation by removing the assumption that there are no independent sources inside. Okay, So we will allow independent sources inside, but of course that generalization uh, with it will bring uh, a little bit complication to what this thing is equivalent to, but that complication is very minor. Namely, if there are independent sources inside, it's more or less obvious that you cannot represent this by a single resistor, but you can represent it with two components. One of them, a resistor, a resistor, and the other is an independent source, whether uh, it could either be an independent current source or an independent voltage source. And now let's talk about uh, the, de the details under the Thevenin-Norton equivalent circuit style. Okay, and this tool, which we will develop, that is, obtaining the Thevenin equivalent circuit or the Norton equivalent circuit for a given possibly very complicated LTI resistor circuit is very, very useful, okay? And it has many applications in analysis. One of which we will see soon enough is maximum power transfer. Okay. Once again, the very, the basic concept that lies uh, in the foundation is the concept of equivalence, so therefore it's important that we remember equivalence well. So we, what it was, was following two one-port circuits are said to be equivalent if All the current and voltage tests that you can imagine and you can uh, perform at the port terminals will give the same result at all times. Okay, and that long sentence we simply express as having the same port characteristics or IV characteristics. Okay, they have identical IV characteristics. Okay, now we directly state. Thevenin's theorem, and then it will be followed by Norton's theorem, and those two theorems can be considered to be duals of one another. And here is Thevenin's theorem. Okay. Consider the below one port. Circuit. Yeah, so let me draw it here. Let's note that one port by N. Okay. The terminals are labeled as, let's say, A and B. Here we have the voltage V and the current is labeled as I. Because there are no other wires sticking out of this circuit or closed surface by KCR, this current in that direction must also equal I. Okay, so this is the one port and it has to satisfy certain assumptions, certain conditions. First of those conditions is that this is LTI resistive circuit, okay, where our one port is 
and LTI. This is the circuit. And it satisfies two conditions, okay, two assumptions. A1, assumption one, any dependent source that you might that you may have within N has its control variable also inside N. Okay. Has its control variable also within the boundaries of one. That's assumption one. No, that's the assumption we also made when we were uh, talking about the input resistances. Okay. Of LTR is the one for 2000 independent sources. And the second assumption is that this guy is both voltage control and current control. Okay, and that means, could you remember that definition? That means no matter what voltage that you apply here from minus infinity to plus infinity, okay, in that range, each of those voltages will generate a unique uh, current at the Port terminals. And likewise, so that's voltage controlledness. Likewise, for the current, no matter what current you drive this one port with from minus infinity to plus infinity, each of those currents will generate a unique voltage appearing across the terminals of your one port. Okay. One port is is both voltage and current controlled. Under these assumptions, this circuit, one port, possibly a very complicated circuit in the sense that it may have, let's say, hundreds of individual components inside, can be represented with just two components. Okay, one of them is an independent uh, source, independent voltage source for the feminist theorem and an LTI resistor. Then we can find V7 in, R7 in, these two numbers, maybe it's a function, and establish the below equals. Okay. This is our or original one port. A, B, plus, minus, B. This is current. And Thevenin claims that this, no matter what's inside one port, provided that the assumptions, the conditions here are satisfied, it can always be represented by this very simple topology. A one voltage source connected in series with one LTI. Okay. And the voltage that's provided by that voltage source is called the Thevenin voltage. And the resistance of this resistor is called the Thevenin resistance. Okay. And indicated by V sub TH and R sub TH. I plus minus. Okay. That is. Given one, once again, given this one port, satisfying those assumptions, you can always find these two numbers, V3 and R3, such that these two one ports, no matter what experiments that you perform at the port terminals, they will always give you the same, uh, the same uh, measurements, okay? the same uh, test results. Let's say. Now, this this topology uh, produces the following IV characteristics, which must also be the IV characteristics of this guy because of this equals. And what's that IV characteristics? That is, by which we mean the relation between this voltage and current. This voltage by KVL must equal this voltage plus minus plus this voltage plus minus. 
This voltage is R in times R, and this voltage is already given because this is the voltage of the independent voltage source. Therefore, V equals R in times R plus V feminine. That equation is the IB characteristics okay, of uh, this one point. IB characteristics, therefore, is V equals voltage drop across the terms of R feminine plus the voltage of the independent voltage source V theta. And let's put this in a box because it's an important relation and give it a number, number one. Okay. Now let's also state the sister theorem, that is non Holmes theorem. where the assumptions are the same, but this time the covalence is established by an independent current source connected in parallel with an LTI resistor. Under the same conditions, A1 and A2, plus of course D1 plus LTI resistor, A1 and A2, we can find two numbers, IN and RN. This can be also a function of the general case, but suppose that the input is constant at this, at this moment. We can find two numbers, IN and RN, such that the following equivalence holds true. The low equivalence holds true. the same one port, let's call it N, with the following labeling, this was I and this was V. And Norton claims that this one port, LTR resistor, can be, and it could be a very, very complicated uh, circuit. It may have many, many components inside hundreds of components. But regardless of the number of components, this can always be represented by just two components, one of them independent current source, the other is an LTI resistor in parallel to that current source. Okay. A, B plus, minus, B, and this is I. Now this current is called the Norton current and denoted by I sub N, and this resistance is called the tendon excuse me, not only this, and it's not by R N. Okay. Now here, because of the simplicity of the topology, we were easily able to obtain IV characteristics. Again, the topology is not uh, any uh, more complicated than topology. Therefore, we can also easily obtain IV characteristics okay, for the topology, which we will. And then, since this thing is equal to this one port, and this thing is also equal to the same one port. Therefore, this thing must be equal to the feminine equivalent circuit. Okay? And that means both have the same IV characteristics, and by equating those two equations, we will be able to easily obtain the transition uh, relations between this pair, V feminine, R feminine, to this pair. Okay, I not to R not. So let's do that quickly. So IV characteristics of this one port is okay, V this voltage equals Rn times this current. Okay, because this voltage is the voltage that appears across the terms of the Norton resistance. Okay. And this current by KCL simply is I coming from here, I not coming from here, therefore this current is I 
plus I naught. Hence, V equals Rn times I plus I naught or we have Rn times I plus Rn times I N. Okay. And that's our current series, number two. And now, because of that, this and this one port, they are both equal to the same thing. They must themselves be equal to one another. And that means this equation and that equation must be the same equation. And that allows us to discover the very simple relation uh, between the pair R feminine, V feminine, and R naught, uh, V naught. Since equation one and equation two must be must be the description of the same thing, they must be equal. We have to have. This equation becomes that equation, meaning they have the same right hand side. Okay, the same right hand side means R naught must equal R feminine, and this product R naught times R naught must equal V feminine. Okay, and I have R feminine equals R naught, and V feminine equals R feminine times. Therefore, once you have either feminine uh, equal circuit or not equal circuit, you automatically have, through those very simple relations, the other representation too. Okay, now, of course, the important question here, from the analysis point of view, is given some non port, possibly a complicated one, how will we compute this representation? Parameters I, I naught one, I naught or V feminine, R feminine. And here is the answer. Computing V feminine, R feminine, and I naught. For a given one before. that from this triple all you have to compute is just two of them because if you know any two for instance R theta and I naught you can uh, quickly figure out the remaining one okay the third one if you know R theta and I naught then V theta is this okay if you know V theta and I naught then R theta is V theta over I naught and so on okay so therefore to uh, figure out figure out the simple equivalent circuit, all you have to do is two, uh, two separate computations. First, open circuit voltage equals V theorem, okay? Now what we mean by open circuit voltage, we mean the following. This is our One port for which we want to compute the feminine equivalent circuit, let's say. This is A, this is B. And now by open circuit voltage, we mean the voltage that you measure here at the port terminals when you do not connect anything to these wires. In other words, when I here equals zero. Okay? And that open circuit voltage must give you the feminine voltage. Okay. As for the Norton current, you do the uh, dual operation. Okay. That is, here we left the port terminals open circuit. The dual operation is connecting with the wire and obtain short circuit. 
Now, when you short the, the terminals, there is nothing interesting about the voltage. Voltage is automatically zero, but there will be some current flowing through that wire, and that current turns out to be not no current. Okay. Of course, we have to be precise about the direction of that current. To short circuit. Current equals the Norton current I want. Okay. And what we mean by the short circuit current is the following. Okay, A B. This is R, one port. You short the terminals A to B, and then the current that flows from A to B on the outside is what we're calling the short circuit current, okay? And that current, whatever it turns out to be, must equal the Norton current, okay? So if you do these two sets of, let's say, measurements or computations, you don't have to do a third one, because R7 is automatically the ratio V7 over I0. But sometimes, computing R7 directly is much simpler, operation than either one of uh, these two. Therefore, it's good to know what that operation is. Okay, three. Once we thin in and I know talk around, we have our feminine equals their ratio. Another way, which sometimes be uh, time saving, another way to obtain our thing is to kill all independent sources. Sources, all independent sources. Within N. And in that case, since there are no independent sources within N, that one port, an LTR resistor one port without any independent sources, can be represented by its input uh, resistors. Okay? And that input resistance turns out to equal the feminine resistance. Okay. Compute the input resistance. Okay. That is, this is R one port, but not exactly R one port, but the modified version in which all the independent sources are killed. Okay. This is R N. But we kill all independent sources, all independent sources are killed, by which we mean, remember, all the voltage sources are replaced by short circuits. All the independent voltage sources are replaced by short circuits, and all the independent current sources are replaced by open circuits. Okay, in that case, N will have an input resistance, and that input resistance is 7. Resistance, okay. R in must equal R theta. Okay. Now let's apply this procedure to an example and figure out for a given one port to theta in and a non one equal in circuits. Find the 
10 minutes and now 20 columns of the below one port. So this is the one port for which we want to obtain a simpler representation. Okay. We have an independent voltage source, it's constant, it's a battery, and we have an independent current source. The current and voltage are given as IS and E, respectively. We have a dependent source whose control variable is this current, IX, flowing over the resistance R in that direction. And for that, we can find Feminine and not only common circuits. So let's start from finding the open circuit voltage. And that open circuit voltage must equal the seven voltage. Then we will proceed to figure out the short circuit current, which will give us not one current. Then we can easily compute the thermal resistance. Okay, let's call that step one. Find the open circuit voltage at the port terminals. We all see open circuit voltage. Okay. What we need here is this V open circuit. And to, to be uh, <coughs> Uh, explicit about open circuit. This, let's make sure that this can't be closed here. Okay. So, let's write down node equation at that node, node 1. KCL at node 1. Okay. So, associated to this node, we have three currents, one of them is Ix, the other is Is, and the other is, uh, in that direction, minus 5 Ix. Okay, now we can disregard that bar here, because from that, no current is common. Okay, so let's write that down. We have Ix plus Is minus 5 Ix equals 0. And that immediately gives us Ix in terms of Is. Not that Is is, in, is known, okay, it's given. It's the current of the current source. Ix equals one fourth Is. And then, once you know Ix, you can easily compute open circuit voltage because this voltage here, these three, oh, this is a single component, these three components are parallel, therefore open circuit voltage equals to voltage of either one of them. Okay? Now we cannot see directly voltage for the current source, either independent or dependent, but we can compute the voltage for the for this combination very easily because we know Ix at this point. This voltage is R times Ix plus minus plus the voltage of the battery. Simply it's E plus R Ix. Okay. V open circuit that for equals R Ix plus E. Ix is known, we just computed it. Therefore, we have R over 4 Is plus E. And since feminine voltage is open circuit voltage, we have therefore computed easily feminine voltage. V feminine therefore is R over 4 Is plus E. And step 1 is completed. In step 2, let's compute the short circuit current which will give us the normal current. <coughs> Step 
step two. Find the short circuit card. I short circuit. this voltage, this voltage, because everything is in parallel, they're all zero. Okay. And now this voltage being equal to zero will directly draw us what I x is. Or in a sense, we're writing KL at the very outer loop. Okay, R I x plus E plus zero, because the port terms are short, must be equal to zero. R I x plus E equal to zero, which tells us that I x equals minus E over R. Again, KCL at node 1 yields, okay, we have IX, we have plus IS, we have minus 5IX. Also, we have a current flowing over this Y, and that current is I short circuit plus I short circuit by KCL must equal to zero. Now that IX is known, therefore the only unknown in that equation is I short circuit. Hence, I short circuit equals minus IS plus 4IX. Okay, and IX is here, minus E over R. Hence, it's minus is minus 4 over r times the voltage of the battery. Therefore, since I short circuit is non current, we have to hear that non current. I non current equals minus is minus 4 over r. Now, thermal voltage is here, Norton current is here, therefore, a ratio will immediately give us the thermal resistance. So let's do that and compute the thermal resistance also. But even though at that point we will have no thermal resistance, let's also apply uh, the method that was suggested, and uh, the other method that was suggested uh, to find the thermal resistance, which was killing all the independent sources inside one port and computing the input resistance. So we can also do that and verify that both answers are uh, the same. step because it's just a simple division. Find R feminine. So R feminine equals V feminine over I not. Okay, V feminine is computed in step one. I not is computed in step two. Therefore, all that remains is to take the ratio. So that equals R over four I S plus E and minus IS plus 4 over R E. OK, 
Okay, and that ratio is no other than minus r over 4. Okay. Now that we have uh, a negative, assuming that r is a positive number. If r is a positive number, we have obtained a negative Thevenin resistance or negative input resistance, which is uh, which is possible when you have dependent source uh, inside, okay, which is like your one port. That's something to keep in mind. But if you have no dependent sources, all the resistors, if you have no dependent sources inside, and all the resistors are passive, that is, the resistances are positive, then the input resistance or the thermal resistance must always be positive. Okay. But if you have dependent sources, once again, anything is possible, positive or negative. Okay. Now, let's compute thermal resistance also by killing all the independent sources inside and figure out the resistance. When all the independent source, uh, sources are killed, this is what remains. 5ix, and here we have ix, this is r. Okay. Now that we have a battery here, and now killing it means we're replacing it with a short circuit. Therefore, this whole branch becomes just a single <coughs> uh, resistance. And then we have an independent current source here, somewhere here. Okay. And killing it means that replacing it with an open circuit. Therefore, simply we don't draw it. And after that operation, that is killing all the independent sources, this is what remains. Okay. Now, since we have a dependent source, it's not obvious what the uh, input resistance for that one point is. So what we do is we apply a method of uh, using a test source at the port terminals. Okay. So we, this is A, this is B, and now we're trying to figure out R in seen from the port terminals. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect a test source, either current source or a voltage source. So let's go with the voltage source, okay? We apply some test voltage across the terminals, and then that test voltage will generate some current in that direction, and their ratio, we test to I test, equals, we know from our previous discussions, equals the input resistance, okay? R in equals V test over I test. So let's see that uh, circuit, that number, gives us what we have computed earlier, minus R over 4. Okay, choose V test equals 1 volt. So it doesn't matter what test voltage we choose, we can choose 1 volt, we can choose minus 17 volts and so on. The ratio V test to I test must be independent of the test voltage. Okay. So for simplicity, let's work with unit voltage, one volt. Then okay, if this is one volt, 
and I exist, this is one of the source of one of, okay? And I exist, the current passing through this resistance R when the voltage drop across this terminus is one. Therefore, I x is one over R. Okay. I x is V test over R, and we have chosen V test to be one. Therefore, I x is one over R. Then by KCR, this zone, we must have I x plus minus I minus five I x plus minus I test must be equal to zero. X minus five I X minus I test must equal zero. And that gives us I test in terms of I X. I X is known. Therefore, I test will be known. And then one over that uh, number that we will have computed I test will give us input resistance. Okay, I test equals minus 4 i x and that's minus 4 over r because i x was 1 over r okay. then r in equals v test over i test v test is known because we chose it we chose it to equal 1 volt i test we computed using the circuit and it gave us minus 4 over R and then taking the ratio simply will give us R input. Okay, 1 over minus 4 over R and that's minus R over 4. That means R feminine must equal R input and R input is minus R over 4. Minus R over 4. Okay. As expected, because that number is the same that quantity, the same quantity that we computed uh, when we take the ratio of V feminine to I naught. Okay. So let's summarize the findings of this uh, example. Therefore, so this was the original one port that we started with. A, B. This was 5IX. This is IS. This is the control variable IX. This is R. This is the this is the one port, and for this uh, we have computed V feminine, I naught one, and R feminine. Therefore, we can represent this uh, you, by either feminine equal circuit or non feminine equal circuit. Now, feminine equal circuit was an independent voltage source connected in series with uh, a resistor. Okay, maybe LTI resistor. Plus minus, and the not only cone circuit was an independent current source connected in parallel with an LTI resistor. Okay. This is V feminine, this is R feminine, this is I naught one, this is R naught one, and R naught one and R feminine, they are the same, uh, same resistance. Okay. So V feminine is computed to be. R over 4 IS plus E. Okay. And the R feminine was computed to minus R over 4, therefore R naught 1 is also minus R over 4. And I naught 1 was minus IS minus 4 over R E. Okay, this is feminine cool circuit and this is not a cool circuit. You'll see some other examples in our next slide in the following pictures.